Mac OS 10.14 More Heavy is finally here. It's been released to developers and the official release is actually coming out in September. So here's my review of Mac OS More Heavy among with my top 14. This is how many top features I have that I consider to be the main changes. So top 14 biggest changes. So yeah, grab some snacks, sit back, relax, and let's have a look. So the Mac is actually my favorite Apple product. Let me know in the comments which one is yours. Which product category do you use the most? Which Apple product category? But I use my MacBook Pro for 10 to 12 hours a day, if not even more than that. So every update, no matter how small it is, has a huge impact on me and my workflow. So I'm always looking forward to Apple adding more features and more improvements to the Mac. And while macOS High Sierra featured a brand new file system, such as the APFS, and more under hood performance improvements, macOS Mojave features mainly improvements on how Mac OS looks in general. So the first big change, the first main new feature in Mac OS Mojave is actually dark mode. So when you go into system preferences, you go into general, and then you can choose between the regular light mode and the new dark mode. So if you pick dark mode, the menu bar, the dock, and the notification panel would all be dark. But it's not just that, the wallpaper would also change to this nighttime view of the Mojave Desert. And aside from this, all first party apps would also be getting this dark mode look. So system preferences would be dark. It's not black, by the way, it's more of like a dark gray with white text. And same applies to the calendar app, the notes app, emails, Safari, activity monitor, and so on. Pretty much all first party apps that were designed by Apple now feature this dark mode, which looks really good but it's, it's not perfect yet. So here's the thing, in macOS High Sierra or Sierra, I don't remember which one it was, but Apple added an option to enable the dark, uh, dark dock as well as a dark status bar. And those actually looked great. Now in Mojave, you don't have that option anymore. You can either have the regular light mode where everything is bright white or the new dark mode where everything is dark. And you cannot do this for apps individually. So you turn the toggle on and everything is done system wide. And here's where the problem comes in place. So some apps such as the calendar or the mail app, they look really, really bad. The calendar app looks completely off with the background text, and in mail, some emails would still have a white background, which can be extremely distracting. And then same applies to Safari, where most websites have a white background anyways. So long story short, the themes that we have right now in macOS Mojave are white everything or dark something and white something else. Now you do have this new option here to change the accent color in macOS. Previously we only had blue and gray, but now we have many, many more options to choose from, which is pretty cool. But honestly, I really wish that Apple gave us the option to turn on dark mode in apps individually or even better, automatically enabling dark mode at night. Now, speaking of enabling some features automatically at night, Apple did give us a feature, a new feature for this, and it's actually called Dynamic Wallpapers. So you get a single, single wallpaper, it's called Dynamic Mojave. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's only one. And the light would actually change depending on the time of day. So at night, it would actually turn into the night Mojave wallpaper, and then the dock as well as the status bar, and the notification tab would all be dark. However, this won't be as dark as turning on dark mode, and it would only apply to the desktop and not all the other apps. So I really wish that Apple, uh, by the time Mojave releases, Apple adds a few new more wallpapers, uh, a few more dynamic wallpapers, but yeah, spoiler, they probably won't. Now, another useful change in Mojave is the recent apps in the dock. So this is similar to how it works on the iPad. Essentially, apps that you've used before and that are not already in your dock, uh, they would appear on the right-hand side of the dock. So this is pretty useful to have. And then Apple has confirmed that iOS apps would be coming to macOS. This is huge. This is this is the biggest thing happening to macOS since macOS 10. But unfortunately, the big transition won't be happening this year, but only in 2019. However, this, we, this year we are getting a few apps supported by Apple. So we get the Voice Memos app, we get the Apple News app, we get the Stocks app, as well as the Home app, which is by far the biggest one. So now you can control all of your smart home accessories from the Home app, and then Siri can control those as well, which was something that you couldn't do from the Mac before unless you have to use, uh, unless you use the third-party app. So finally, we can do this natively in macOS, control your uh, smart home accessories with a Home app. And then if you constantly have a messy desktop, well, there's a new feature in macOS Mojave called Desktop Stacks. So you just enable it from the right-click menu and all of your items will be organized in essentially folders and then you can open them and close them at the press of this arrow. It's really, really nice. I do like it a lot. And then there's also some new Finder improvements in Mojave. So first off, we get this brand new gallery view. Now, I personally don't like it because I like to see as much as, uh, as, much as possible when it comes to my documents and my files instead of getting this carousel view. But yeah, for anyone who's not uh, used to macOS, for anyone who's more used to an iPad UI, for example, in iOS, 
uh, more than macOS, then this could be a very easy way to understand Find Review, so to say. And then with this brand new gallery review, you also get some info on the right hand side as to what the documents uh, that you're viewing are. Uh, so for example, you get all the EX, uh, EXIF data when it comes to photos, which is very handy normally. You actually have to press Command plus I before to have that. So having everything here automatically in gallery review is very, very useful to have. And then Quick Look got some very big improvements as well. So in case you don't know what Quick, uh, Quick Look is, it's essentially when you press the space bar to quickly view a document without having to open it. So now you can actually rotate images directly in Quick View, which is great. You can even sign documents directly from Quick View, and you can finally even trim videos. This is, this is awesome. This is really useful to have. You don't need to open up QuickTime anymore. You can do a lot more stuff directly from Quick View. And speaking of doing a lot more stuff from something, you can do much more things when it comes to taking screenshots. So uh, this is so much better in Mojave. You can now annotate, you can add shapes, you can add text, and even a signature to a screenshot that you've just taken. And by the way, if you now press Command plus Shift plus 5, that's that's the new command, you get this brand new window from where you can even record your desktop or a section of your desktop. So no need to open up QuickTime for that. So this is a brand new feature of screenshots as well. Screenshots recording, video recording. And then speaking of cool new features, uh, Apple also added a really cool new feature in Mojave, and that is continuity for photo uh, scanning. So essentially, if you're in a document, you can simply right click and then select take a photo from your iPhone, and then your iPhone would automatically open up the camera app and you can take a photo with your iPhone and it would instantly appear on your Mac. And same applies to scanning documents. You just place the documents, you scan it with your iPhone, and then the iPhone would create a scan automatically after it detects it. Uh, so you would get that black and white look and then it would instantly appear on your Mac. So an extremely useful feature to have finally because I used to send images via AirDrop or using iMessage. So, so yeah, this is a very, very useful feature to have in Mac OS Mojave. And speaking of extremely useful features, FaceTime now supports group calls. Finally, so this was one of the main features in iOS 12 and we have it on the Mac as well. So essentially you can now speak to up to 32 people at the same time in a group video chat, which is awesome. Uh, whoever is currently speaking, by the way, that person would appear in the center of the display. So that, that's how it works. And then one of the last changes in terms of macOS uh, Mojave is in terms of the App Store. So the App Store finally gets a big redesign. The App Store itself hasn't been changed that much since the introduction of the App Store on the Mac, which was back in 2010. And it looks so, so much better now. It gets a lot of its design from the iOS App Store. So it's clean, it's simplistic, and you have this modern, transparent look and feel, so to say. And we get the discover, the create, the work, the play and then develop tabs uh, on the left where you can discover relevant tabs uh, you get the categories and of course the updates and speaking of updates by the way the official mac os updates so the system-wide updates have been actually moved to system preferences i mean that's where they should have been from the very start and then something really interesting is that by the way on mac os uh you have instead of settings you have system preferences and then on ios you have settings so why do we have settings and then system preferences on, on mac os i don't know consistency but yeah, there you go. There's only three more things that I want to mention in terms of macOS uh, Mojave. So the first one is actually performance. So performance is actually quite bad. <laughs> it's really bad. So I've installed this on my 12-inch MacBook, which is a baseline 2015 model. So yeah, it's, it's not the best Mac that you can install Mojave on but it's laggy, it's really slow, it's laggy, and it wasn't near, it wasn't nowhere near the performance uh, of uh, this MacBook on High Sierra. So High Sierra was much faster, but yeah, keep in mind that this is the first beta, so with future releases, I'm convinced that the performance would be improved. Then second, 10-bit videos are still not supported in QuickTime, meaning that if you record 10-bit videos, you cannot play them in Finder until you convert them. And Final Cut Pro, by the way, it does support 10-bit video, so you can edit 10-bit videos, so you can turn those into a video final movie, uh, but not being able to see the actual video file in Finder is a huge downside because, you know, the only way to actually see what's in that file is to open up in, in, uh, in Final Cut, which is a huge downside. So hopefully Apple would bring 10-bit support in Finder soon because I want to switch to 10-bit ASAP. Uh, so that the colors would pop even more in the videos. So, and I can do a few more tricks with the colors. But yeah, really hoping that that happens soon. Because yeah, right now organizing those files without seeing what's what's in them is is a pain. Unless uh, use Final Cut for organizing everything, which I mean you should be using Finder or something else. But yeah, finally, unlike iOS 12, which basically works on all devices that support iOS 11, macOS Mojave drops support for the 2009, the 2010 and also the 2011 Macs. So essentially you need the Mac that's from 2012 or newer. Okay, so in the end, what are my thoughts on Mac OS Mojave? Well, overall, Mac OS Mojave actually brings some very visible changes to the table, such as the dark mode, uh, because High Sierra and Sierra, they mostly brought performance improvements. So it's, a, it's pretty good seeing a visible uh, change. 
Uh, it's also the first macOS release that brings iOS apps to the Mac. And then the big change will actually be in 2019 with macOS 10.15, uh, 10 where developers would be able to port iOS apps, all iOS apps, to the Mac, not just the four ones that Apple ported themselves. So yeah, Mojave is essentially the first taste of the future, a future at which I'm really, really looking forward to. With that, there you go. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about macOS Mojave so far. Is it a good software update? Is it a bad one? Do you think the improvements are, are good or not? Uh, do you think the, the wait would be worth it or not? Uh, also, subscribe if you want to see more in-depth videos like this one. Uh, let me know what videos you want to see next in terms of the reviews. And also, don't forget to turn on notifications so that you get notified as soon as a brand new cool video comes out. Otherwise, you, you might miss it. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Feel free to give a like if you enjoyed it. To let me know. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. So, no tech, signing out. Cheers.